Now I will demonstrate the general protocol for SDS page. Acrylamide is a neurotoxin. Be sure to wear gloves for the entire procedure. Protect any wound from contacting with acrylamide. Please follow the laboratory instruction to prepare separating gel solution, lower layer, and stacking gel solution, upper layer. Note, do not add the catalyst timid and the free radical provider APS at this moment to avoid initiating the reaction prematurely. Cover both gel solutions with aluminum foil to avoid light. Label both tubes. Keep them at room temperature for use. To set up a cassette, you should have two black knobs, a glass plate, a white aluminum oxide ceramic plate, a comb, two spacers, a gel caster, and a gel rack. This type of gel rack can hold two cassettes. It has a rubber casket at the bottom to reduce the risk of gel solution leakage. Clean one glass plate, one ceramic plate, and two spacers with sponge and ethanol. Wipe with kin wipes and allow them to dry completely on a rack. Mark a straight line on the glass plate about 3 cm from its upper edge. This line can be used as a reference for the level of separating gel. Make sure this side facing outward, otherwise the mark will be washed off by the gel solution. Pithy formula. Glass outward, aluminum inward, and no leakage afterward. Stack the cassette sandwich following this order. Ceramic plate, spacer, glass plate. The space created in between is where to pour the gel later. Make sure the parts fit tightly, especially the grooves of the spacers must notch to both plates tightly. Loose all screws of the gel caster, allowing enough room for the cassette sandwich. Put the gel caster upright on a flat table and carefully insert the sandwich with the glass plate facing the screws. Push the sandwich all the way down and press the two upper corners by hand to make them even. Slightly tighten the screws diagonally. Examine the bottom of the cassette by hand to make sure the edges of the plates are flush. Thus the gel solution will not leak during pouring. If no problem found, tighten all screws. To avoid breaking the glass plate, do not over tighten the screws. Take out the gel rack and carefully load the assembled cassette onto the rack. Insert the two black fixation knobs into the holes at either side of the rack. The short arm of the knob should point upward. Turn the long arm of the knobs upward 180 degrees while pressing to tighten them. This will secure the cassette on the rack. Fill the space in the cassette with distilled water and let it stand for two minutes. Observe if any water leaking at the bottom. A leakage means the cassette has not been assembled properly or the bottom of it is not flush. Then the cassette has to be reassembled. If there is no leakage, pour the distilled water out. Insert a filter paper strip between the plates to blot away the residue water. Do not disassemble the cassette for drying, otherwise you waste all your work so far. The gel used in this experiment has two layers. The composition and pH are different for the upper and lower layers, hence its name, Discontinuous Gel Electrophoresis System. The lower layer has a higher acrylamide concentration and pH value than the upper layer. Do not switch them. To prepare the lower layer gel, take the centrifuge tube holding the lower layer gel solution and open the lid. Add proper volumes of timid and APS into the gel solution. When the temperature is low, the volume of APS may be doubled. Close the lid and gently inverse the tube a few times to mix. Do not inverse too hard, otherwise the SDS in the solution will generate bubbles which interfere with gel polymerization. Quickly take the gel solution with the plastic pipette. Let the tip touch the upper edge of one spacer and continuously cast the gel solution into the space between the plates. Try to allow the gel solution flow along the sidewall of the spacer to avoid bubbles. Keep casting until the level of gel solution reaches 2 mm higher than the 3 cm mark on the glass plate. Keep the surplus gel solution in the tube, put on the lid and let it stand. 
Quickly take 200 microliters distilled water with a medium micropipette P200. Let the tip touch the upper edge of one spacer and slowly pipette the distilled water into the space between the plates. The water will form a layer on top of the gel to block the air and create an even gel surface. Another layer of 200 microliters distilled water may be added to ensure the effect. Do not add water too fast. Doing so will disturb the liquid surface and result in an uneven gel top. Wait at least 15 to 20 minutes for the gel to polymerize. Low gel concentration and temperature require longer time. While waiting for the gel polymerization, one may prepare the samples for electrophoresis. When the time is up, observe the surplus gel solution. If it has polymerized, then the gel in the cassette usually has also polymerized. Slightly tilt the gel rack to examine whether the gel has formed an even surface. If things go well, pour out the distilled water and block dry the residue water between the plates with filtered paper strips. Never touch the gel surface. If the level of the lower gel is at the mark, you have done it successfully, you may give yourself a pat on the shoulder. If the gel surface has not formed, check it again after 10 minutes. If the surface still does not form or is uneven, you will have to start over. The gel solution that has not polymerized completely is still toxic and must be disposed at designated places. After the lower gel polymerizes successfully, preparation of the upper gel may start. Wash and dry the comb, make it flat, and insert it between the plates for testing. If everything is good, pull the comb out for later use. Again, take the centrifuge to holding the upper gel solution and open the lid. Add proper volumes of timid and APS into the gel solution. When the temperature is low, the volume of APS may be doubled. Close the lid and gently inverse the tube a few times to mix. Do not inverse too hard, otherwise the SDS in the solution will generate bubbles, which interfere gel polymerization. Quickly take the gel solution with a plastic pipette, let the tip touch the upper edge of one spacer, and continuously cast the gel solution into the space between the plates until the solution reaches the top of the ceramic plate. Try to allow the gel solution to flow along the sidewall of the spacer to avoid bubbles. Insert the comb immediately and center it. Put the lid back on the tube containing surplus gel solution and let it stand. Wait at least 10 minutes for the gel to polymerize. Low temperature requires longer time. When the time is up, observe the surplus gel solution. If it has polymerized, the gel of the cassette should also have polymerized. Slightly tilt the gel wrap to check whether a gel surface has formed. If there is a gel surface with intact sample wells, you have made the upper layer gel successful too. If the gel surface fails to solidify, check it again after 10 minutes. If there is still no surface formation, pour away the upper layer gel solution and start over. The gel solution that has not polymerized completely is still toxic and must be disposed at designated places. If the sample wells are not intact, you may decide whether to start over based on the number and volumes of the samples. Once the gel is casted successfully, twist the black knobs downward and pull them out. Push out the cassette sandwich from the bottom, remove the residual gel from both sides by hand or using a plastic card, and then rinse both sides with distilled water. To avoid clog, do not drop residual gel into the sink. You may use a marker to label and number the sample wells, or use a guiding plate later. The comb may be removed now or after the electrophoresis tank has been assembled. Gently pull out the comb to avoid damaging the gel. Rinse each sample well with distilled water to remove any residual gel solution. Decant the cassette sandwich briefly. To avoid clog, do not rinse the gel in a sink. One may go ahead assembling the electrophoresis tank without pulling out the comb first. 
Before assembling, prepare the anode buffer and the cathode buffer. You will also need two red clamps, a tank lid, power lines, and an electrophoresis tank. The electrophoresis tank consists of a lower anode tank, an upper cathode tank in which the gel cassette sandwich will be mounted, a U-shaped casket, conductive platinum wires, and electro plugs. Get the tank and the red clamps ready. Mount the gel cassette sandwich on the U-shaped casket with the glass plate facing outward. The cassette sandwich should align laterally with the casket and is secured with the red clamps. For the clamps, the longer jaw should be outward, and both clamps should secure as low as possible. Make sure that the projects along the lateral edges of the ceramic plate are perfectly aligned with the two columns of the U-shaped casket to prevent leakage. Upon finishing, you can see that the electrophoresis tank has been divided into an anode tank and a cathode tank. Measure a 70 milliliter cathode buffer with a graduated cylinder and slowly pour into the cathode tank until the tank is full. Wipe away any overflow. If the comb has not been removed, it may now be easily pulled out with the lubrication of buffer. Observe to see whether the buffer is leaking. If it does, adjust the sealing between the gel cassette sandwich and the U-shaped casket. Double check after the adjustment. An electrophoresis tank can carry one gel cassette sandwich on either side. If one side is not in use, clip a glass plate on that side to prevent the platinum wires from contacting the buffer. Measure 140 milliliter anode buffer with a graduated cylinder and pour the buffer into the anode tank. The buffer level should cover the bottom of the gel. Remove bubbles from the bottom of the gel to ensure a closed circuit. Check the glass plate on the other side. The buffer must not contact the platinum wire. Attach a guiding plate on the glass plate for sample loading. The sample wells at both ends usually have poor electrophoresis effect and should not be used if possible. Add samples into the sample buffer, which contains a tracking dye. Heat the sample mixture at the specified temperature for certain time as instructed. Check the loading order. The molecular weight marker is usually loaded first, followed by sample 1, sample 2, sample 3, and so on. Use a micropipette to take the requested amount of a sample and slowly load the sample into a sample well. You may see the sample sink to the bottom of the sample well. This is because the sample buffer contains glycerol, thus has a higher specific gravity. Continue to load all samples following the order. Remove the guiding plate after finished. Put on the electrophoresis tank lid, red to red and black to black, and press down to secure. Plug the power lines into the power supply, again red to red and black to black. Set the voltage and start running electrophoresis. The dashed line marks the boundary between the upper and lower gel. We can speed up the video to observe the stacking effect of the samples. All samples are first stacked into the same level, then moved into the lower gel. During the electrophoresis, if the buffer in the cathode tank decreases, please pause the power supply first. Open the tank lid and fill up the cathode buffer before we resume electrophoresis. Once the blue tracking die has reached 0.5 cm from the bottom, pause electrophoresis, decrease the voltage to zero, and turn off the power supply. Disconnect the power lines. Remove the electrophoresis tank lid. Pour out the buffer. Remove the red clamps and carefully pull out the gel cassette sandwich. Take advantage of the waiting time and wash all the parts and components just used. Wipe and leave them at a well-ventilated area to dry. In order to avoid mold growth or rust, gels should be disposed at designated places. Next, we may stain the gel or carry out western blotting. Please continue watching the demonstration videos for these lab techniques. 